What's up, my dudes? Val here. Today, I'm going to be going over the top 10 units in the game. Let me go ahead and pull up my list real quick so I don't mess it up. I've already kind of put this out of the way. Um, so if you guys don't know what I'm going to be doing from now on with every tier list, because there's one unit that really stands out that's just super, super turbo broken is Leader. Um, just going to let you guys know he's at the top of every tier list until I say otherwise. So he is the first tier zero unit in the game. He's not, normally I do one to 10. Um, he is T0. He is above number one. So this is the best unit in the game. If you guys don't know why, he raises the damage floor of the whole game. He decreases cost of his own team of youth by 20%, making it so you can run some very expensive teams. He buffs up on base to all characters 54%, which then you plug it into idle. It's somewhere around 130% actually. I don't know the exact math in my head. But you guys get the idea. Very, very broken unit. Completely changed the game. Super, super strong. Absolutely so strong that you, there's like it's like putting Idol and Dennis on a tier list because they're you need farms because they're a necessity. Putting him on a tier list isn't fair to the other units because of how much he warps the game state. He's just insanely powerful. Absolutely the best unit in the game. Uh, if you guys do not have him Evo, I highly recommend doing it. Really, really good. So. He is the first tier zero. He's going to be tier zero probably for the foreseeable future. So hope you guys get ready for that. Uh, next up is going to be John, which I don't have Zeno actually. If you guys don't know why Zeno is going to be up here, uh, Zeno is basically a unit you can get from Esper City Part Five. Really, really hard to get unit. Super hard. Uh, he has the highest damage output in the game. He's single placement. But he gets a 15 million attack stat on an on a uh, six SPA with a really good range, and it's random. It applies 13 different effects to it. It allows basically for him to just run down any elemental stages through through uh, raw power. Uh, he's going to be able to run down elemental stages just by hitting really really hard when he does hit any of his DOT passives, and he's going to be able to just nuke bosses. Basically, he's a cheat code, and he does all this for about like I think he's like maybe. 70k to 120k to max out he's not a whole lot he's not very expensive and he's just going to run down stages he's just basically a cheat code so john's absolutely top of the game right now uh he can kill a 525 million hp enemy solo really 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 strong and then next up after john we have peem lr plus so if we go here we type in peem and we go to her Form 2, uh, she is a unit that can basically reach, I believe off the top of my head, a 1.97 million attack stat, somewhere around there, with guaranteed superpower on uh, three placements. This makes it so she hits very, very, very hard. She's able to kill, I think, like a 430 million HP enemy, making her the second best damage dealer in the game currently, so she's number two on the list. Uh, and as well as all that, she also has one of the most busted leader skills in the game with attack 110 on pure heart as well as cost minus 20%. Super, super strong. And then she also, as if all that wasn't enough, uh, she also has a cleanse that you can activate on top of everything else. So she's just all in all a really, really good unit. In my opinion, the second best unit in the game. Well, third best, not counting leader. Like I said, we're just going to ignore leader. Ignore leader exists. Uh, so she's the second best unit in the game if you don't count John she's the best unit in the game in my opinion But yeah, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get up to the next one Which the next one might surprise some of you guys because of where you guys stand is Mooj uh, Neko arc what Neko arc does she doesn't have a very high attack stat in fact most of the time She's probably gonna be around 700k attack stat for you guys But if you pair her with all might she breaks around like a 1 million attack stat which doesn't sound like a lot but because Mooj essentially has every passive in the game, there's some excluded, but for the most part, she has every passive in the game on a 4 SPA, full AoE, 4 placement. Uh, she's able to giant kind of just turbo stuff out debuffs and DOTs without any overlap, so you're able to stack up a lot of DOTs with just Mooj by herself, and it allows it so Mooj is able to do a ton of damage with very low attack, making it so she can scale exponentially with any attack buffer like All Might, are infinite buffs to the point where she's going to be doing tons of damage. So now, if you get her to a million attack stats, you can still kill around a 400 million HP enemy, as well as being a really good tool for stall, simply because of the amount of DOTs and the amount of debuffs she can provide to lock up the enemy. Mooj is in a really good spot in my opinion. I think number three is very fitting for a unit that is very high damage, as well as very high stalling capabilities. A really, really, really good unit. Uh, super strong, highly recommend getting them. Next up is Saber. 
Uh, let's go ahead here. King of Knights Altar. Saber got a change. All Saber did was get changed to raise attack and critical. Uh, so Saber has raise attack and crit stuffed together all in one passive. And it's really, really, really powerful. It makes it so Saber is able to reach, I believe, like a 3.4 million attack stat with leader buffing. And make it so she can crit on that attack stat. She's able to kill around a, about a 425, like 400 to 425 million HP enemy all by herself. Really, 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 really strong unit. Super good. Uh, highly recommend getting her once again. If you guys don't already, especially with the new MR Shiro, who brings us into our number four. Number four is MR Shiro. Miracle Rare Shiro is easily number four in my opinion. Um, he can get up to, I believe, like a 2.97 million attack stat with raise attack. Has a really strong leader skill with uh, 130 Swordmaster. If you go ahead and and then whenever you get him maxed out with his raise attack, he actually has uh, three forms that you're going to pick between. Between Justice, Critical, and... Um, Resist plus damage buff. If you go resist plus damage buff, he can be breaking a 6 million attack stat as a resist unit on a 3 placement, making it so he hits very, very hard. If you don't go um, resist plus damage buff, you can go critical on a 70% crit rate, making it so he hits really hard as well. He can kill somewhere between a 390 to 400 million HP enemy on his own inside the test range. Whenever I say kill on his own, keep in mind, this is just in a test range. It gives you a ballpark idea. It's not perfect. But it gives you a ballpark idea of how comparatively strong these units are. Um, he's just a little bit below Saber in terms of damage output. But overall, a really, really, really powerful unit. And definitely worth the grind to actually get. So next up, we're going to go into... That was our number five. So now we're going to go into number six, who is Visored Captain uh, Shinji. Visored Captain Shinji. I don't have him evoed. But whenever he's max evoed, he has one of the best nukes in the game. Because you nuke a wave... And then you can summon in a bunch of copies to go ahead and slam into the next couple waves that are then affected by Tamer. And then he also has really good support utility because he's able to reverse any of the enemies that he actually attacks. So that gives him a lot of stalling capabilities. So he has a nuke, he has stalling capabilities. All in all, just a very staple unit. Just really, really good support and just a super strong unit in general. So next up, what I have after that is Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh is up here for a couple reasons. This one is King of Heroes. Uh, he can get up to a 10 million attack stat by himself, and he's not even buffed by leader. Uh, God help us all if he ever gets buffed by a category buffer. But he doesn't have a category buffer right now. He's still able to reach up to a 10 million attack stat. He's super, super, super powerful, and he has a really good leader ability for one of the top five teams in the game right now, which is Treasure Hunter, because he's got that minus 10 SPA. Not you. You have a really cracked leader ability as well. But you are 120 attack with a minus 10 SPA, so it's like a 140 value leader because SPA is so valuable. Um, he's able to get moves down to 3.6 SPA, allowing her to spam, turbo spam out debuffs. And he's basically the lead to one of the best teams right now, making him super strong, as well as him having a nuke, making it so he's very, very good and very infinite viable because then you have the nuke that he's able to provide as well. So, yeah, Gilgamesh at number 7. At number 8, we have Gojo. Gojo himself. Um, we have Unlimited Honored. Gojo has a 120 lead to Spiritual Sensitivity, which, once again, is a top 5 team, and range plus 10%, making it so Gojo is a definitive leader for, like I said, one of the best teams in the game. And then Gojo also has an active ability whenever you get it maxed out that allows him to be one of three things. Either slow, knockback, or cosmic. It allows you to basically adapt based on whatever situation you're in. And at a three placement, you could pick one of each. As well as a 45 second time stop active. Making it so he's one of the best supports in the game. As well as a leader for one of the best teams in the game. Uh, absolutely deserving of his number seven spot. So next up, our number eight spot, excuse me. So next up at number 9, we have Adam, Father of Humanity. Father of Humanity is a unit that, as you guys have known, has broken the game several times because he has infinite potential in his copy system. Right now, I believe he deserves his number 9 spot. I've seen arguments for taking him off the top 10 completely because it's not a good passive super worth copying right now. But he can raise attack and go into Karma and then just do tons of damage because the way Karma works. Karma is sans his passive and he can copy it and just do an ungodly amount of damage and be able to actually, you know, 
nuke enemies like crazy, uh, but he is a very good unit in that regard. And if you are able to get karma on him, then he's just going to hit really, really hard to the point where you might not even the need the raise attack. On top of that, he's also buffed by leader, so he's able to get a really, really high attack stat now. Yeah, all in all, still a very, very, very powerful unit in my opinion, and I think he's worth the number 9 spot. Number 9 and 10, I can see them being debatable, but I think 8 and up are pretty concrete. And then at number 10, we have Hikari. Now, I did this for two reasons. Hikari at number 10, I did for two reasons. One, he genuinely is a solid unit. I think he's actually in a really good spot now with his crit uh, increase, but two... I really like Hikari, so this one's personal bias at number 10. You can put a lot of units at number 10 right now because the game's in a pretty balanced state. There's a probably, outside of like the top 8 units in the game, like I said, I believe past that, there's a lot of units that are up for contention for 9 and 10, so this is just personal preference on these two. Uh, it really comes down to whoever you think is actually going to be better, but for Hikari, I think Hikari's ability to get jackpot and go into be one of the most powerful units in the game is a really fun aspect. And as well as it's something that could potentially, like, if he, let's say, for example, you compare Jackpot Hikari versus Base Hikari. Base Hikari is basically just slightly better Nanami, while Jackpot Hikari has the highest damage output in the game. So I think putting him at number 10, one, is funny, and two, is somewhat justifiable, purely because the amount of damage he can output whenever Jackpot's actually active. So, yeah, just to recap the list really quickly, and I'm going to be posting the list in the comments as well. At tier 0, we have Leader. At number 1, we have John, then Peem, then Mooj, then Saber, then Shiro, then Shinji, Gilgamesh, Gojo, Adam, Hikari. All in all, I feel like, like I've said in the past videos, uh, I feel like the game's in a very good state right now. I feel like the game is very, very balanced to where there's nothing that feels overly, like, overly strong, where you feel forced to run one or two things, but instead now the game is so diverse in what you could run and what's best and what's worse that there's plenty of discussion to be had between t top 10 lists. I feel like top 10 lists between two different people will be drastically different with maybe some people rating some units higher that maybe I don't even have on my top 10 list at all. But yeah, at the end of the day, my this is my little list, my little opinion. Uh, more than welcome to disagree with it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.